If you ask people what was the first communication satellite, they'll probably say... Telstar. Telstar. Did anyone say that? Thank you. In fact, that was the first active communication satellite. Prior to that, there was this big silver balloon. And the idea was you bounce signals off it. And we actually were involved with sending signals from the UK to Russia via Echo. That's another story. It needed a very sensitive antenna. And so Bell Telephone Labs built this one at Homdell in New Jersey. It's a rather special type, which is very low noise, ideal for that job. When all that work was completed, they gave it to two physicists, Penzias and Wilson. And that's a picture of them monochrome when they were a bit younger, more recently in colour, over to the lower right. Well, Penzias had built a wonderful receiver, probably the best in the world at the time. And they used the telescope to look around the sky. And they got very worried because there was too much noise, more than they thought there should be. They tested the receiver, and that was perfect. In fact, I'm involved with a project at Jodrell now, and that's exactly what we were doing last week, measuring the noise performance of our antennas and receivers. They knew that a pair of pigeons were living inside this little horn, quite close to the cabin because it was a bit warm. Now, pigeons, like us, were warm-blooded, and they, give off, they gave off radio waves. So they captured the two pigeons, and it was in a have a heart pigeon trap. It's now actually in the um, Air and Space Museum in Washington. It's quite famous. You can see one of the pigeons is in there. Um, and in fact, they still exist. That's on the website. I couldn't find a pigeon one, but you have them for everything else pretty well. They captured them. It took them two days. They sent them to another Bell Telephone Labs up at a place called Whippany, about 40 miles to the north in New Jersey. And what did the pigeons do? They were released, and they just flew straight back. <laughs> so they got someone to turn them into a pigeon pie. Anyway, whilst they'd been in there, they had covered the interior of the antenna with what in their paper in science was called a white dielectric substance. You see a certain amount of that in Trafalgar Square, I suspect. 